And good morning and welcome to Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. Talking girls soccer today. Janet Hurts in Madison Lady Cubs soccer coach. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, Tim. Thank you for having us. Thanks for being on this morning. It is soccer season already and off and running. Yes, sir. It's one of those things where it's really is an off season these days but um, we kicked off things last night with our jamboree it's been an annual tradition the last three um, we now had an opportunity to have field an 11 v 11 so this year we're looking forward to building our numbers in our program um, we haven't had a jv side the last couple of seasons so we're looking forward to building that program too and so last night it featured um, some of our alumni coming out to help as well they were officiated we had Catherine mm -hmm. fisher and taylor strauss out there as officials and we had a couple alumni as coaches um, both abigail Siddham and alexis stockton who graduated last year so it was a yeah. real Lady Cope affair last night, bringing the kids back. Uh, yeah, back on the field again. Where does the summer go? Where does mm -hmm. where I mean, where do the seasons go? Essentially, let's go back and and I always like to talk about your history and mm -hmm. what brought you to where you're at and kind of give us a little background on yourself. Yeah, um, I actually originally started playing soccer in Connecticut. I mm -hmm. moved here in the uh, early 90s and soccer wasn't a thing. I'm actually a member of the very first soccer team in Jefferson County. Mm -hmm. um, and so in terms of the Lady Cubs program, um, those kids that I played with were the only team so far to win a sectional championship at Madison Solidate High School with soccer. Um, and then in terms of coaching, I started coaching in the junior high program in 09 and before I coached there for a few seasons before I joined the Peace Corps I did youth development work over there in Thailand for two and a half years I developed programs there uh, specifically um, women's programs because at that that country women weren't allowed to play soccer um, and so then I came back here after my Peace Corps service ended and another term um, with AmeriCorps um, so a lot of nonprofit work humanitarian work and then I've been back with the girls program this is my second season as the head coach um, and then uh, the seniors that I have with me today I was their JV coach three seasons ago and so we're coming full circle and so it's nice. Um, when you were a player did you envision being a coach? Yeah it's one of those things where um, I saw the game ahead of time, and that's one of the things, too, like in terms of basketball, being an eighth grader, having Donna Cheatham tell me I'm going to be a great coach, like that's something like um, I think something that she saw in me, and that's something that I took to heart, too, is because I think it's one of those things, a way to give back. It's one of those things where you can pay it forward almost because the opportunities has allowed me as, as an individual because I may not have had those opportunities if sports weren't there to help mm -hmm. to develop me as an individual. I, I talk to a lot of people mm -hmm. and, and we talk about the game and it doesn't matter what sport, but we mm -hmm. talk about different players coming and coaching different sports. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if, you're a great, if you're a great soccer player, it doesn't mean you're going to be a great soccer coach. What makes a great coach? Um, for me, it's one of those things where you don't get conceited where you think you know everything. Because mm -hmm. to me, the moment you think you know everything is the moment that you're not going to evolve as a coach. One of our program philosophies is always self-improvement, and that includes me as well. This past summer, I completed my advanced national license in California. I now have my U.S. license with my D over the summer as well. Next summer, I'm getting my C, C license and my premier license. So mm -hmm. then with all those, I'm now at the same level as collegiate coaches, and that way it helps my my kids that want to play college mm -hmm. and also keeps me where I'm learning and I'm learning from other coaches and expands my network of coaches to help me develop and then also help them in the next tier if they want to play at the next level. How does the, how does the game change from season to season? I think it's just one of those things where um, it's personalities maybe so much is just mm -hmm. the team chemistry is always going to be an element um, and so that's the biggest thing is making sure we're cohesive um, I think with uh, in terms of our senior class that we have here today we have seven seniors and like I said last night at our jamboree they're a microcosm of our team as a whole meaning that we have some new players to the team and then we also have some experience and that foundation where we can then unite as a, a unit as that family where we're having that we is greater than me mentality I think that's always the end of the day objective of any team because you can have all the talent in the world but if you don't come together as a unit you're not going to succeed on and off the pitch you you when you're coaching and, and you have different players I mean as you mentioned mm -hmm. players come in players exit uh, mm -hmm. seniors exit Whoa. Do you have to change your coaching philosophy based on your players? I think um, for me it's just I've adapted more over the years of maybe not being quite as strenuous with like structure of being more flexible mm -hmm. because I think it's a more of a generation where they they 
on the fly kind of thing. And so then two, having a program where I'm not always sure how many numbers I'm going to have, but I think being that flexibility, but then also um, just maybe not having that same like mentality that I had as a, like being coach as a basketball player, like that strict structure mm -hmm. in terms of like 10 o'clock means 10 o'clock. And then if you're not, you're running like a hundred laps kind of thing. Cause to me, it's about making sure we're developing um, a culture where they feel safe as well. And so I don't want kids rushing to practice and then maybe putting their, their um, health at risk as well. And so mm -hmm. adapting and making sure that the uh, person as a whole is um, looked out for. Numbers are a concern. They're a concern for everybody mm -hmm. in every sport. How do you overcome low numbers? Um, for me, it's about building a culture where people want to be a part of. Um, I think that's um, the foundation where kids feel safe and they feel like they feel comfortable being part of that team, I think is part of it. Um, I think also within our culture, we're the only sport program I know, at least at the high school, where we don't charge player fees. So we do everything we can to make sure every social economic class can be represented. So we do fundraising, we work with, with boosters and so forth to make sure every kid can play and not have to worry about a player fee. Um, other sports that are school the player can pay up to five hundred dollars to play and we want to make sure that kids are having opportunity because someone um, like I said sports was a great development for me mm -hmm. but then also my master's is in criminology I know that I want to help kids get that trajectory where they can reach their potential and not have that gateway for something else you um you, you have a JV program mm -hmm. this year, is that right? Yeah, that's th we're going to be playing two full JV games. Um, both of those are going to be at home. Mm -hmm. One's August 13th, the other one's August 21st. And then um, our first priority is player safety. Mm -hmm. um, and so in terms of that, we want to make sure we have recovery time. And so um, our Hoosier Hills and Lynn Silver Creek's already agreed to a half of JV. And that also helps because we have a limit of how many halves we can play sure. in a year. And so that way we're not too strenuous because women's soccer the high school is one of the highest injury because of the three games with four days and right. the lack of recovery. So we want to make sure our kids' safety. Um, and so right now the game plan is those halves, but if we have where we our kids or attrition, we're not having the players in terms of numbers to support that, then we'll pull that back to make sure that our kids are staying healthy. Yeah, I, I already kind of know the answer to the mm -hmm. question, but I ask it anyway. How important it is for, for your program to have a JV? I think it's, it's paramount, especially because um, we, as a program, I think too often our kids don't get to play when they're younger against higher level competition, and so those kids are stepping onto a field against Columbus East, who's won 17 of the last 20 conference champions in the women's soccer. Um, and so I think that's asking a lot for a kid not to have had any experience on the field that was a JV player to step from the other pitch on the other side of the middle school and then come play against that. And so to help that filter in where they feel safer as players, they have better technique, better touch and so forth I think will help us as a, as a whole and our objective hopefully with tryouts this um, coming Monday Tuesday at the junior high um, we're hoping to fuel the girls team for the first time in programs history um, and so I think then too you have those levels where young women are getting opportunities and those boys still have their opportunities and then that way both programs are building and having that established feeders program coach let's let's go back and talk you we left off kind of with the junior high program yes sir it kind of follows the same pattern as the JV program with building, and if you can put together that junior high program, mm -hmm. it, it does a multitude of things for your varsity program. It, it definitely does, and it curates where those kids are used to playing with each other as well, because um, the past year I've had um, camps and so forth that were free and that $5 donation kind of thing for our program, and having those kids from like the third through eighth grade working together, because those will be future teammates and it's our hope is in our program. So getting those kids familiar with one another. Um, and then I just know as a player, um, the girls that I won state with at Southwestern for basketball, we all started playing together at third and fourth grade. You build up that rapport and you know what everyone's going to do before kind of thing. And I think what helped was with, at least with basketball is we all played point guard at some point so we all could handle the ball. And then if we can all develop soccer technique and that versatility with positions too and having that foundation for all of our players. Because one of our initiatives this, this winter is going to be um, I'm working right now with the local elementary schools to start futsal for our first through fourth graders and futsal is a 5v5 version of soccer and so then that way kids can have winter opportunities as well other than just camps where they get some competition with it as well. Not that you would ever turn a person down or a lady down that would want to come and mm -hmm. uh, want to come and play, but it certainly is a, a huge benefit and an asset to the program to have kids 
that start earlier, that mm-hmm. know the game, that know the fundamentals. And, and uh, every coach uh, I've ever talked to, have said, well, we always teach fundamentals. But mm-hmm. if they know the fundamentals before they get to you, it makes your job a little easier. It does, but at the same time, that stage of development, we can still incorporate that sure. within our practices. Um, we right now, I think, have four or five kids that have never played the sport, which is fine. That's mm-hmm. great. They because that's the when they want to learn something new and that's the biggest thing is the willingness to learn Mm -hmm. and so that's the i think the key ingredient for any coach is having that kid on board or in that support system that you want to continue to self-improve because that's our underlying philosophy is that continuous improvement and so for me as a coach today is the fourth of august i want to be a better version of today Mm -hmm. tomorrow so that's always that's what i tell my kids is that's what their objective is we're not aiming for perfection just simply improvement and the measure of our success is looking at ourselves right and so in terms of our program that's what we do is we look at ourselves as a unit and so like some of our program goals two years ago these kids when they played jv um our seniors they never lost a half against hoosier hills Mm -hmm. last year when they played them on a varsity side our goal differential was cut in half Mm -hmm. so this year's objective within conference in the hoosier hills is to then climb the ladder we've been the bottom only places up right? right and so that's within our within our own house is continuing to set our standard of self-improvement and then those other things those processes will continue out let's go uh let's go review mm-hmm. the the jamboree last night what you yeah. take away from it uh, for me it was one of those things where it came together of bringing some old players like i said some mm-hmm. of them officiated for us and some of them were coaches and then also it brings the community together as a whole um, i think because we're at the junior high or pitch or field um, i think sometimes it's kind of forgotten that that's a high school sport and right. so like making sure that that's on the, the map a little bit f- in terms of the public eye and then letting the public know that hey we're home this year we're hosting sectionals again this year just so they know that the opportunity is there for them to come to support us and we appreciate that especially this season we only have five home games but it's probably t- of the, the toughest home schedules we've had in a long time right. um, we open up on the 18th of August against Silver Creek um, who lost their 103 career goal scorer, but they have a lot of talent still on the roster. Um, and then we then host Columbus East, as I stated earlier, has won 17 of 20 Hoosier Hills Conference championships, either co or single right in our 20 year history with women's soccer. And then we have New Albany, Jeff, and Senior Night will be against Seymour. So that's a pretty healthy schedule. It's a healthy home. home schedule. Yeah, yes. you you've had had four days of practice mm-hmm. officially before last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, performance for your team was there? I mean, can you take a performance away from last night for what um, you saw? Yeah, for me, it's one of those things. Is the benchmark is where we were last year, mm-hmm. um, and so at this point, I think we have a very strong foundation. And I think one of our senior captains last year, Abigail, she said that we're going to surprise some people, and I think this year we have that real strong possibility of shock some mm-hmm. people and so it's one of those things where that foundation is is there and we continue to work in that self-improvement and those kids are on board for that let's kind of reflect on a year ago what kind of season did you have um, for us it's always about that self-improvement and like mm-hmm. I said we cut our goal differential in sure. half we still finished the same place in conference um, but I feel like we overall did a better performance out of conference we were seven and four our seven wins were all shutouts with meaning that no goals were allowed mm-hmm. um, and so I think that's a good foundation to to improve on the only um, ORVC team to defeat us is the only the only team to score on us as well and so that's one of our objective is to um, continue to improve in our out of conference and then improve within the ladder of our conference as well you um, you're always wanting to improve you're always wanting to get better you're you're do you look at wins or losses do you look more quality of play to me it's it's at the end of the day, sometimes it's not a fair result, right? Mm-hmm. If you look at the World Cup, for those that watched the 64 games, I only watched 60 of them. I apologize. <laughs> um, you have to look at in terms of some of those countries getting out of group play, right? In terms of getting out of that, that was their measure of success, right? Mm-hmm. And then maybe come four years from now, that's going to be their success of maybe getting to like the semifinals or so forth. And so for us, it's making sure that we're improving in terms of in terms of that but then also what I see as success is not always those wins and losses, right? Yeah, we've won more games than we have since 2012, right? That was one thing. So right. some people are like, yeah, that's improvement, right? right? But for me, end of the year is how many of my kids invite me to their graduation parties. So that to me is how I am defined as a coach is, is the relationships I'm able to build right. with them. That's so. relationships with coaches mm-hmm. and, and the impact coaches make mm-hmm. off the field 
they go a long way yes sir definitely and so that's one of the things too is like being having that approachability and I think that's one of the things too that's helped bring our program together is that we sit down we have talks we we work things out within our house that way we can move forward um, and so that's one of our things is making sure that we're collectively on board together and making sure that that communication and those standards of play on and off the field are cohesive you spend a lot of time with the kids during the mm -hmm. season um, and, and as we all know mm -hmm. um, there are many more important things off the field that happen. Exactly, and so one of the the uh, initiatives that we started last year as a program is that um, our players are uh, varsity letter requirement is community service, mm -hmm. and so I've partnered with the elementary schools, and this year our boys program is also partnering with us. And what we do is our high school kids have e-learning days, mm -hmm. but I work at the elementary world. We still go to school, right. and so I'm like, how can we then still help our kids, right? And so what these kids do, and our boys will be joining us this year, is we go in we serve as tutors we help kids with like their e-learning because that technology for kindergartners right. they can't read so you know they have a little help right right and so then they come in the classroom they help last year in one c some of the kids did a uh, PE class with Mrs. Kiefer's class. Mm -hmm. um, later we'll talk to Emily Kiefer. Her mom worked over there as a kindergarten teacher. So like just introducing kids to the sport and just m making sure then too the character development because as I tell my kids you're not all going to be Mia Hamm even though they're, some of them may not always know who she is. So I need to find a new role model of <laughs> maybe an Alex Morgan or something. Um, but, when, but in all like reality though is that we want to make sure that they can have avenues to succeed both mm. academically and then um, through the community and on the field and so we have a high standard of academics as well uh, two years ago we had three of the six Lily finalists were on our women's soccer team the winner Catherine Fisher was a member of our team um, and then this year we're hoping to have our first academic all-state representative um, and then our program goal is 75 percent of our kids all right. academic all conference so it's not just all about soccer it's mm -hmm. about making sure the whole development um, because I played soccer at the division two level but I got a full right for academics right. and the same thing for grad school so this, for me, it's one of those things where education can, can provide so many open doors for people and maybe that then if they get to a school, they don't like the sport anymore, but then they're having, that's what's paying them to be there. They may, that's when they might not fall in love with the sport anymore. So we want to keep that love and that passion available for them. I want you talk about who you have in today. Yeah, today we have a few of our seniors and our captains. Um, we have a junior captain and two senior captains, and we also have one, two, three seniors. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six players in the house wow. today. Yeah. So we're well represented within our uh, junior and senior class today. First one is? The first one we have today is one of our goalkeepers, Taylor Rowlett. She's a senior. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, you like being goalkeeper? Um, has its perks. <laughs> what What don't you like about being goalkeeper? Um, definitely the stress level mm -hmm. that for like if I miss one or mm -hmm. say, it's definitely it's hard. <laughs> Can't catch them all. No. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of ground to cover. Yes. Yeah. How long have you been playing soccer? Um, about 13 years. You like it? Yes. Apparently, like for it. that long, you do like it. <laughs> um, as a senior, what what's your goal as a senior soccer player? Um, as a senior soccer player, my goal is definitely to help lead the team, be outgoing, and help some of the younger players just to help build the program. Do you do you have? Uh, is it kind of within yourself to be a leader f to help younger kids? I mean, can you do that? Some I've seen some that can and some that can't. Can you do that? Yes. Yeah. What's it take? Um, leadership, ta like be talkative, mm -hmm. just give it your all, really. Can you can you be a talker? Yes. <laughs> That's why I'm a goalkeeper. That's why you're a goalkeeper. <laughs> you do a lot of talking. Yes. Yeah. What's uh, what's the biggest challenge as a goalkeeper, other than keeping the ball out of the net? Um, the biggest challenge in goalkeeper would be hmm, talking to the girls or like staying like open with them making mm -hmm. sure they they know what they're doing as mm -hmm. long as like keeping care of your own right do you have uh, plans after high school yet for college I do and um, well it's a little in between because <laughs> I don't know yet if I want to play soccer somewhere mm -hmm. but I am deciding probably between IU and UC all right that maybe play soccer. Yes. All right. Well, best of luck this season. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Next up, Coach. Next, we have another senior, one of our captains, Sophie Backus. Sophie, good morning. Good morning. Uh, what's your love for soccer? Why did you start playing? 
My parents actually made me. <laughs> <laughs> like when I was little, I did not want to play. Yeah. So yeah, they made you play. Yeah. I used to like throw fits on the soccer field. <laughs> are, are you Are you sorry they made you play? No. no. I'm. I'm happy I suck with it. <laughs> <laughs> How many years you been playing? Thirteen. Thirteen years. Apparently, it's not been too bad there. Yeah. What position on the field do you play? Like center defense. Yeah. Do you like that? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I like being like, I don't know how to word it where it's not like mean. Because <laughs> like. That's all right. You can be mean. I like being aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You like being <laughs> aggressive. So playing defense then? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's the biggest challenge for that position then? Well, I'm on my own line, so, yeah, I don't talk very much. Ah, uh -huh. is it a position where you need to be a good communicator? Yeah, because I need to tell everybody where they need to be. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't do that? Well, I try. Yeah. But <laughs> are, you, are you loud when you tell people things? Or are you quiet? I'm quiet. <laughs> I, I see. That's, why, that's what I thought. You, you have goals as a, as a, as a player? Well, I just want to get better, like, just individually. Yeah. So then it helps the whole team. It does. Do you have plans after high school? Yeah. What? I don't know. You don't know yet? <laughs> You're going to do something? Yeah, I'm going to do something. You're going to do something probably. after high school. Well, that's good. Well, best of luck this season. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Coach? Okay, next we have Emily Kiefer, another senior keeper. A senior keeper. Goalkeeper. Yeah. Goalkeeper. What, what jar soccer jargon on you? So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all right. That's all right. I, I'm trying to follow. Good morning, Emily. Good morning. How's life? It's pretty good. Is it? Yep. You like soccer? Yeah, I really enjoy it. Really? Really? A lot mm -hmm. of running? Not for me. Not I'm for <laughs> you because you're a keeper. Yeah. That's right. That's right. No, there wouldn't be a lot of running. Um, what's, the, what's your biggest challenge as a goalkeeper? Um, for me, it's like talking and yeah. like trying to tell the other players what to do because I feel like I don't want to tell them something to do when they feel like they're, what they're doing is right. That makes sense. Yeah. But if it's not right, is it okay to tell them? Yeah. Yeah. I, are you are you forceful or are you just kind of? I just, I just I mean I kind of I'm not really forceful. <laughs> no. I can imagine. I can only imagine. Um, uh, being a goalkeeper, have you done that 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 position the whole time you played soccer? Um, no, I started my sophomore year mm -hmm. and I played goalkeeper that like whole season and then last year I started playing forward mm -hmm. and I played that most of the season too. Yeah. What do you like better? Um, that's a good question. No. They have their, they both have their pros and cons. Yeah. Um, goals for you as a senior? Um, just to have fun. I don't really take soccer like too, too seriously, mm -hmm. but I do like to get better, but also have fun at the same time. Can you do that? Yes. Yeah. Plans after high school? Um, I'm trying to go to either Purdue or IU. Mm -hmm. And study? Biomedical engineering. Oh, all right. Well, best of luck to you. Thank you. All right. All right. Next, we have another senior captain, Sydney Hammock. She's a midfielder. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Over here. Okay. How are you? Good. Good. What? Uh, what's What's your your favorite part of playing soccer? Mm, probably like being with everyone and interacting with everyone because mm. I think we all get along very well. You have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of running. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What position you play? I'm a midfielder. So there's a lot of running involved with that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's a, as a midfielder, what's the biggest challenge? Mm, probably, like, when the ball's on, like, the complete opposite side, you were just on. Mm -hmm. And then, like, trying to run and help everyone else and, yeah. like, being there. Yeah. How many years you been playing soccer? Thirteen years. Thirteen years. Goodness gracious. Everybody's been playing soccer a long time. What about, what about when you play? And do you get bumped around a lot? I mean, do you get pushed and shoved and that kind of thing? Yeah, but you just got to push back. You got to push back. You, you got to hold your ground? Yeah. Do you hold your ground well? Yeah. For the most part? Coach ever tell you to get tougher? Uh, I don't think so. No? No? All right. What about goals? What do you have as, as goals for yourself or for the team this year? Mostly, like, just everyone to improve mm -hmm. because I think we do have a good chance of like competing very well. Mm -hmm. Do you have um, uh, sights set on what you're going to do after high school? 
I really want to go to Purdue University, mm -hmm. and then I want to study agribusiness and minor in animal science. All right. Best of luck. Thank you. All right. Okay. Next, we have another senior, Kaylee Snyder. She plays on the back line for us, defense. Defense. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you play on the back line, so tell me about what that is involved with. What do you do? Um, well, we just kind of, well, we try and stop the ball from getting to the goal. We, um, the first person will press the person with the ball and then someone will cover. So we work as a team to communicate and say, hey, we're here for you. Don't worry about it if it gets right. past you. A lot of communication. Yeah. Very important communication. Definitely. Yeah. And if you don't communicate, what happens? They score. And that's not good. No. So I'm sure um, your your communication skills got to be of, of the highest. Oh, yeah. 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 So what, what happens then if they score? Then if, if somebody scores, what do you guys do as a group? Do you get together and try to figure out why or do, how do uh, you? I usually just try and say, hey, you're fine. It's mm -hmm. You're good. Don't worry about it. Let's just keep playing and let's try and score a goal. Yeah. Let's just move as a team and go forward. How long have you been playing soccer? Uh, probably about 13 years. Yeah. It's it's been a love of everybody's apparently. Yeah. yeah. What about goals for you uh, uh, after high school? I am going to go to college. I'm not mm -hmm. sure which one. And I'm hoping to play soccer. When I go to college, I've already met with over nine so or college oh, wow. coaches, mm -hmm. and they just told me to figure out which college I like the best and then choose yeah. the team from there. You have, I, I kind of skipped the question, you have goals for, for the team for this year? Um, I just think getting better and communicating better, and then the new girls knowing the positions. Um, and I've told them if they need any help with anything, just come to me, mm -hmm. and I can help explain or yep. do my best. You like teaching? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, best of luck this year. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next we have a junior, Kennedy Sidham. She's our speaking captain. You are the speaking captain. Why did you get chosen as a speaking captain? Uh, I'm not 100% yeah. sure. I know that I'm very good at interacting with the girls. I'm mm -hmm. kind of outgoing. I try to make sure that all of the girls, you know, feel included. And even if it is their first year, they're not sure if soccer is for them or mm -hmm. if they're not going to be very good and they're really nervous. I try to, like, welcome them with open arms and know that everybody's got their own thing. And we all have strengths and weaknesses. And we're going to work together to make it us work as a unit and a team. What about um, for you? you? Why did you? start playing soccer? Um, my brother and sister have always played soccer. My sister was a captain last year and she mm -hmm. was a senior and my brother kind of started it all for us. He was um, played soccer at Madison. He's mm -hmm. kind of older now but I just looked up to <laughs> both of them. <laughs> He's kind of <laughs> That's always good. Uh, um, but you you kind of the, the the family played so you decided to play too? Right. Yeah and you like it? I love it. Ah. What um, What's the hardest thing? Well, first off, what position do you play? I play midfield. What's the hardest part of that? I think the running portion is kind of hard, and then being have to like connect the back line to the front line can be kind of challenging sometimes because you're in that middle kind of position, and there's a lot of people like you know stuck there, and it's hard to get the ball out of there and be able to communicate and push up and get the girls to scoring position. When you have so many workable parts on the field communication has got to be of, of the highest standard oh yeah we all try to communicate and sometimes it doesn't work out very well and that's one of our most important goals is to communicate and be able to talk to each other so that we know where we're going and get the ball where it needs to go as a junior what uh, what's your goals for the team um, my goals for the team is to continuously grow. I know that um, some of the girls are kind of hesitant and new, but I think we have a really good shot at being a good team this year. And we have a lot of seniors, and we're really going to miss them next year. But I think we still will be able to grow. And so I hope that we can take what we learned this year on to next year and still grow. Do you, as as a junior, do you do you look forward to the opportunity of being in those senior shoes next uh, year? Yes, I look forward to it. I've always wanted, you know, I've looked up to the seniors. Even now, I still look up to the seniors. They're only a grade older than me, but they do know a lot, and they've been here for longer than I have, and I still look up to them. So I'm excited to be that girl that, you know, the freshmen look up to, and they're like, I want to be her. Mm -hmm. I want to be a captain. I want to be a senior, and I, I really look forward to that. I'm impressed with the answers and the conversations with the kids, and that I, I, I always tell coaches that I, I, if I get those good, solid answers, I know mm -hmm. it's a reflection on the coach and the communication skills. Yeah, I think it's something we as a program, we have a 
uh, well today's gonna be a morning practice so we have a circle before we commence practice we right now it's getting to know each other questions kind of thing but then we debrief at every practice and the team's doing team journals this year as well and so that's one of the things is the re reflection that way they know the why's and that, that way they can understand the how's of things and sure. so I think that implementation that journal because also today during our their practice they write a letter to themselves so they, that way they always are trained to f understand and then be able to communicate with like, their understanding what they want to accomplish and then if they understand themselves right and they can understand what they can contribute to our team talk a little bit about before we wrap up of, mm -hmm. I know you mentioned home games but talk about your season a little bit when you get underway and officially and go forward yeah um, we open up our season um, with a Jennings County on the 14th, but before that, we have a scrimmage against Scottsburg at Scottsburg on the 8th um, of August, and then the 13th, our JV opens up that night against Scottsburg. Um, so it's one of those things where the the varsity will play them as a scrimmage, but then our JV team will play them as um, their first game. Sure. And then we're on the road 11 games this year. Our first home game is 10 a.m. against Silver Creek that will feature our varsity game first and then one half of JV after. I've talked to Patrick Anderson, their head coach, sure. out there already. And so I think that's something that um, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but I think it's a welcome challenge, our homestand, but then also the amount of road games we have. Um, so help combat that with the kids to make sure they're scholar athletes meeting students first we have study tables every week and then our buses are equipped with Wi-Fi and so they do their homework on our on to every away game then they can have that free time on the way back that way their academics are their focus so. it's uh, like we mentioned earlier there's a whole lot more than soccer sometimes it definitely yeah all right well best of luck this season we appreciate you being on this morning thank you we appreciate it all right again uh, coach Janet Hertz Madison Lady Cup soccer program thanks to the girls for coming in this morning we appreciate that we'll do it again next Saturday live from McDonald's on Madison Tilltop for Jordan Bear on Tim Torrance on Works 96.7.